our Lord says to Philip, he who sees me sees the Father. Um, I am in the Father and the Father is in me. And there's this um, radical interconnectedness in the Trinity, a, a mutual indwelling. It's um, like, like Jesus Christ is God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, one in being with the Father. Okay. So there's this, um, this oneness uh, amid the three persons of the Trinity. And it's the same way with humanity. We're radically in interconnected. We, we came from one set of parents. Saint, uh, oh, I'm sorry, um, John Donne says, no man is an island. We, again, we're radically interconnected. Life is a web of interdependent relationships. We're all yoked together. But 2,000 years ago when God became man, these two interconnectedness, uh, these two interconnected entities became connected to each other, God and humanity. Like when the Word became flesh, when God became man, we became interconnected with God because Jesus shared our human nature, but he also shared God's nature. He, uh, and, and the mystical body of Christ, the church, is where we experience this radical interconnectedness to God. That's why Jesus Christ says, I am the way. There's no other way to God except in Jesus Christ, except through Jesus Christ. Uh, in Christ, by baptism, we are adopted by God. Like there's that story uh, Scott Hahn tells that he says, um, I went to the, uh, buy something in the store and the cashier gypped me out of $10. So I went back and she gave me back the $10. And he says, I forgave her, but I didn't adopt her. Okay, I forgave her, but I didn't adopt her. Well, in the church, God not only forgives us, God adopts us. He takes us up into his own life. Okay? He makes us radically connected to himself. Okay? And, and through that, he makes, connects us to God. St. Catherine of Siena speaks of the Incarnation as the sacred bridge between God and man. The sacred humanity of our Savior is a bridge between heaven and earth. She says, the earth of our humanity is joined to the heaven of his divinity by this bridge. Okay. Like we say, he is the way, the way to God. Outside of him, there's no other way. They say, child of God is our most fundamental relationship. Child of God is the most important relationship. Saint Aloysius of Gonzaga would say, it is better to be a child of God than the king of the world. It's better to have this radical connectedness to God than to be in charge of all of humanity. Okay. Matt Talbot was a reformed alcoholic, works, worked on the docks in Ireland. And he once overheard a, a dock worker claimed to be of royal blood. And, and he, um, he wrote on the back of a dock ticket, as to true nobility, true nobility derives only from the blood of Christ. Because it's through the blood of Christ that we're connected to God, we're redeemed. Uh, now, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Okay? If he's our way, the two things we need are truth and grace. St. John describes them as light and life. Okay? Uh, so truth illumines the way for us and lo love or life impels us along that way. Grace is life, sin is death. And either we're dead to sin and living in Christ or we're dead to God and living in sin. Th those are the two alternatives. Like, the two things in life that are mutually exclusive are the state of mortal sin 
and the state of sanctifying grace. Okay? We can't be in both at the same time. Okay? Either we're outside this communion with God or we're in that communion with God. Certain things like venial sin can constrict the flow of grace, uh, but mortal sin separates us from that, that life. So the truth shows us the way to God. Um, that, and they say that only the truths that, that, the only truths that live on are those we are willing to die for. The, the truths that we're willing to give up everything for. Like, and, and lies are pit, pretty popular in the world. Like Mark Twain has a line, he says, a lie can travel halfway around the world while the truth is putting on its shoes. Seems like lies travel very fast. A lie can travel halfway around the world while the truth is just putting on its shoes. Um, St. Charles Borromeo says, fight to the death for the truth and the Lord will do battle for you. Fight to the death for truth and the Lord will fight the battle for you. This is a story of a, a Korean, a, a missionary who went to Korea and he mentioned when he was assigned to Korea that this, this assignment would mean certain death. And, and the bishop who assigned him said exactly. A short time later the missionary returned and said, I'm ready to die, I'm ready to live. Okay? I'm ready to die, I'm ready to live. To be willing to live the life of grace, it's necessary to die to self, to die to this world. And like we say, the, the, to follow the truth is love. Like, the truth guides us and love impels us along that way toward God. St. Gregory the Great would say, the proof of love is in the works. Where love exists, it works great things. But when it ceases to act, it ceases to exist. When love ceases to act, it ceases to exist. Um, Saint Therese of Lisieux would say that love consumes only in the measure of our self-surrender. Love doesn't force us along the way. Love consumes us only in the measure of our self-surrender. Another priest, um, Saint Jose Maria Escriva, Escriva says, redemption happens at the rate of my self-giving. Then he says, like, for some of us it could be a long time, but redemption happens at the rate of my self-giving, my, my giving of myself to God. And, you know, kind of just to sum it up, the goal is, is as he says, I am the way uh, and the goal is to make him our way to heaven, his way our way, his life our life, his truth my truth.